During the period of the Third Reich, Adolf Hitler's Nazi party took great steps to control Germany's population of youths. They aimed at developing youths who, in the long term, could become future leaders and enable them to achieve Volksgemeinschaft. Along with being obedient, idolizing the Führer, being physically fit, sacrificing oneself for the national good, and doing everything possible to strengthen the health and racial purity of the German nation, boys were expected to be strong fighters, while girls were taught to bear many children. The following podcast is based on the Cambridge A-Level History Curriculum. For boys aged 6 to 10, they were part of the Cubs, promoting physical health among children. Boys aged 10 to 14 were part of the young German boys, and took part in outdoor activities, parades, and sports. The overall aim was to promote Nazi ideology, and build them up to becoming soldiers. Indeed, by the end of World War II, a significant number, especially of those living in the cities, had become child soldiers, protecting against the inbound Allied invasions. Boys aged 14 to 18 were a part of Hitler Youth, which had a military-like hierarchical structure. Hitler Youth organised camps, parades and military training, gearing the population of young men up for war. Their participation, heavily promoted during the mid to late 1930s, and later became compulsory from 1939, taught them to be loyal to Hitler and the Nazi regime. For girls, the first Hitler Youth Law in 1936 made it compulsory that girls aged 10 to 14 become members of the Young Girls Group. They were required to be educated up to the fourth grade and be a healthy, pure-blooded German citizen. In this group, they were taught home economics and were educated on Nazi history and ideology. Girls aged 14 to 18 were a part of the BDM, meaning the League of German Girls. Their activities trained them for their roles in German society, being good housewives and mothers. Finally, the organisation Faith and Beauty provided working opportunities for women aged 18 to 21. The work included fashion designing, cooking and childcare. This was because the Nazi party wanted to train women to become good mothers and housewives. Adolf Hitler himself said, He alone who owns the youth owns the future, and this largely formed his plan of action towards the education system in Nazi Germany. First, let's examine his policy towards boys. Hitler aimed to create loyal and obedient Nazis who would lead Germany in the future. The Nazis wanted to create a physically and racially healthy German race, whilst they needed to be prepared for becoming soldiers in the army. Thus, education had to be focused on strict discipline, obedience, and physical education. The school curriculum was designed to indoctrinate children from a very young age, as they were continually taught Nazi ideas and beliefs. Hence, lessons were usually just consisting of the teacher speaking and the students copying it down. This is because students were discouraged from questioning or debating any Nazi teachings. Physical education was given 15% of school time, as Nazis wanted children to be physically fit and healthy, for boys to be ready to become soldiers, and for girls to be healthy for childbirth. Whilst lessons such as history and geography were used as propaganda, as history reinforced Nazi history and beliefs, and geography taught about the history of German land and Germany's requirements of Lebensraum, even mathematics was used as propaganda, as it required students to answer questions that helped reinforce Nazi beliefs about warfare and the struggle between the races. Moreover, the subject German taught students how to be conscious of their national identity. Healthy biology or race studies focused on teaching students how to classify different racial groups based on physical appearance, with Jewish children often used as real-life examples of racial inferiority. Second, let's examine his policies towards girls. Hitler aimed to teach young girls how to become the ideal woman, a submissive, healthy mother and housewife, to keep them physically fit, in line with the ideology of an elite Aryan race, and to encourage them to have a lot of children. The League of German Girls instilled the traditional values of housekeeping, raising children, and modesty into young girls. They were also taught how to dress, with traditional conservative German clothing being heavily promoted. There was a separate curriculum for girls that mostly focused on building up young girls to learn about motherhood, reproduction, and being a housewife. Girls had to take eugenics and domestic science, and they were taught how to select a husband based on the best genetic and physical qualities. 
As a special award for mothers who had more than four children, they were presented with a mother's cross, and this was taught to be an incentive for young girls to have more children and to get married at a younger age. Thirdly, with the changes to the education system, those in positions of employment within education were significantly impacted. During the years of Nazi rule, teachers were used as a tool to indoctrinate the youth. In order to ensure the loyalty of the teachers to the Nazi party and make sure the teachers remained absolutely obedient to the state, teachers were required to join the Nazi Teachers Association from 1933 onwards. Also in 1933, all Jewish teachers were removed following the implementation of the Law of the Restoration of Professional Civil Service. Furthermore, by 1936, 32% of the teachers in Germany were a part of the Nazi party. Despite the policies and crackdowns of the Nazi party, and the fact that Hitler Youth is seen as the most successful movement in Nazi Germany as it reached 8 million members by 1940, there were still some youth opposition groups. The White Rose Group performed acts of underground resistance as they painted anti-Nazi graffiti, such as crossed out swastikas, and they also published and posted anti-Nazi leaflets around cities. The Edelweiss pirates also used underground resistance by refusing to join Hitler youth camps and instead going on their own camps during which they disobeyed Nazi morals by singing about sex, food and freedom. On top of that, they also attacked Hitler youth patrols. Finally, the Swing Kids is another youth opposition group which practiced non-cooperation and non-conformity. They liked English and American music and fashion, which went against the Nazi ideology. Moreover, they organised parties where they met up and spoke of sex, listened to jazz, got drunk and smoked. All of these groups were influenced by the Western culture, which did not align with the Nazi ideology. As a result of their opposition, they were suppressed by the Nazis, with many being arrested and executed. Key evidence for this is that in December 1942, the Gestapo arrested 739 Adolwies pirates in Dusseldorf as a result of their resistance to the Nazi party. It's been a while, but now I'm back, and I shall be releasing a few episodes about Hitler's Germany over the next couple of weeks. Thank you very much for listening to this episode of my podcast. Please do rate my podcast on whatever platform you're listening to, for example, Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Also, please click follow or subscribe to be notified when the next episode is released.